Hey, welcome to the new episode of the Involved Podcast. Today I am joined by my brother, Chris. Hey, everybody. All right, so today we are going to be talking about Game of Thrones and the new Star Wars trailer. What are some things you're looking forward to this Game of Thrones season? Uh, I'm looking for this to finally kind of wrap up. Um, it's been a long, long journey, especially getting to this season. Uh, having two, almost two years off has been kind of difficult to, uh, you know, stay with the show and everything. And so it's kind of had to go back and rewatch some things and, and get refreshers. So thankfully there's a lot of content out there on the web to kind of get me back into the show and everything. But, you know, I think this was a good first episode of doing that as well. Um, you know, I know some people were kind of disappointed. They're like, I want content. I want content. But, um, you know, when you're off for almost two years and you can't expect that everybody's going to binge the show, uh, I think this episode did a good job. No, yeah, definitely. It uh, it really helped get the Game of Thrones back in the mind right away. And it really, it's got me psyched. Uh, I'm still wondering who's going to be that person at the end that finishes out on top. Who do you, yeah, who do you think, think it might be? Well, you know, it it's tough because there's so much stuff out on the web and everybody's throwing out theories of this and that and the other. And um, it's tough because, you know, I think there's several people that I want to see on the throne, um, but I want other people to, to live to make that happen, you know, so... You know, obviously, I'd like to see Jon Snow sitting on the throne with Daenerys by his side. Um, but how is that going to be possible if they're both going for the same thing? You know, is Daenerys really going to relent her power to Jon? Um, you know, is she going to see the family tie and be like, okay, well, family is more respectful and all that kind of stuff. But then again, that also throws in the whole kink of their family. So... You know, or if, if vice versa, it's going vice versa. If John is going to do the same thing in the other direction, you know, if he's going to find out that he's a Targaryen and just be like, all right, you know, I'm, I'm happy with no throne, you know, she can, she can have it. Yeah. I mean, you know, he's kind of doing that now. So that's why I think he's going to maybe kind of have like a change of character arc where he's going to be like, I'm going to support her for now, but once she finds out that I'm the true king, this could make it weird. Not just, you know, the family thing, like I said earlier, but, you know, I'm really the heir to the throne and not as she believed that she is. And is she going to be willing to support me the same way that I'm supporting her now? So, you know, obviously in a perfect world, we would hope that all happens, that, you know, they defeat the... Uh, you know, the king, the the white king and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, um, and then get rid of Cersei because Cersei's terrible, you know, and all that kind of stuff. But I, I don't I, I can't tell you who the final battle is going to be between. I, I don't think it's going to be human to human. I think they're all going to fight together and there's going to be some turn on somebody and it's going to tear everybody's heart apart. You think Arya is going to kill uh, Cersei? Um... I feel like she really wants to, you know, I think, uh, I feel like I'm, that's I'm, what her I'm, end game I'm is. Al- yeah. I'm almost more curious to know what Bran's going to do with, um, with her brother, you know, with him showing up with the Kingslayer showing up. Uh, I think it's going to be very with Jamie there. It's going to be very weird to see that dynamic. I, I don't, I don't think it's actually going to be that weird because I think Bran is going to be the same, like, Every time we've seen him, like in season seven, he's he's not really Bran anymore. He's now he's just a three eyed raven. So I don't really know how like he's not gonna react like Bran, like you would think Bran would react. He's just gonna react as a three eyed raven, I think. Yeah, I mean he you know it's be very emotionless. Things. Yeah, it's I think that's what's gonna make it weird. I think Jamie's gonna expect him to like retaliate and say something and Brandon's gonna be like, nah, we're good. Like I'm at this place now and this was my journey and it's, you know, ha- it only came because of what you did. Um, so yeah, I, you know, that 
might be less. I think there's just going to be that brief awkwardness like we saw at the end of the episode, but then I think it's going to just kind of be a back burner issue. For sure. All right. Well, let's uh let's kick gears and uh let's talk about some Star Wars. Uh new trailer came out last week. Uh we'll get to that in a second, but first I want to kind of talk about how you got into Star Wars. What uh what what got your passion going for it? Well, originally the only movie that I had seen for a very long time was Empire Strikes Back because at our grandma and grandpa's house in Ashland, um, all they had on tape was a recording of Empire Strikes Back from TV. And so that's all I knew for the longest time. So, you know, the spoiler in, in Empire Strikes Back, it was like, okay, cool, I know all this stuff. You know, and then I finally got a chance to see Return of the Jedi. And so... um you know, those are the two movies I saw. And it wasn't until I think I was in middle school or freshman year of high school or something. It was it was very late in the game, in, in my sense of it, that I finally knew that A New Hope existed. And that blew my mind. Like, I was like, holy crap, there's a movie that tells the story before all of this stuff? So, you know, at that point, I was kind of like really hooked into it as it was. And I watched that at Grandma's house, like, all the time. And so as I got into high school and I kind of got some friends that were into it and our older brother Brandon was into it, you know, that really kind of like helped. And then, you know, uh, episode one was coming out and Brandon was really big in episode one. And so that really kind of got me even more into it and stuff. Cause he actually went back when they did in 97, you know, they re-released yeah. uh, the 20th anniversary. Brandon actually went and saw, I think all three movies, in the theater because they re-released everything in the theater. I think I got to see maybe two of them. He might have taken me to one of those because I kind of always remembered seeing the older movies like kind of in theaters. So he yeah, must we have went taken somewhere. We, we, yeah, so that must be where I have that memory from like then. Because obviously yeah. I didn't see them back in the eighties when they right, right, right. Yeah, they did that re-release in ninety seven. Um, and I actually got a bootleg copy of the DVDs in like the early two thousands when I worked at Mr. Movies in Ashland. Um, one of the guys that came in on a regular basis, like got some bootleg DVDs of the original trilogy. And I was like, Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, I am watching these all the time. So every day that I was at work, I always had star Wars playing and people would be like, Oh, can I get that copy? And I'd be like, Nope, sorry. That's mine. (laughs) Just so that people couldn't turn off what was on TV. So You know, so that, you know, and ever since then, it's just always kind of grown and grown. And, you know, and I was hitting, you know, kind of the reboot of Star Wars when they did the prequels, you Mm -hmm. know, just kind of as you were, you were young and all that. And so that's kind of when my passion really got ignited was kind of in high school and getting, you know, and I was getting into film and wanting to go to film school. And so, I mean, did you actually make a a fan film in, uh, in college a little bit? Yeah, so when I was in college, um, was right around the time when episode three was coming out, and so some friends of mine and I, we got together and and wrote a a short Star Wars fan film and shot it, and it's still kind of sitting in the editor. Where I've got a guy that's hopefully working on special effects for it, because that's really all it needs. I mean, the mm-hmm. whole movie's shot and cut; it just needs special effects put into it and everything so fingers crossed that sometime in the next five years or so before all the star wars movies are done for a while that um we can get that put together and stuff because he showed me some rough cuts and i was like oh dude these finally we have lightsabers (laughs) but um yeah no star wars has just always been number one it's uh it's just an awesome huge story and there's such a world and galaxy to it that is ever growing and they're so cool about people adding to it. And I think that's what makes that particular um, movie and world more attractive as opposed to, you know, if people are really into Harry Potter world or game of Thrones or um, you know, the Hobbit and, and Lord of the Rings stuff is just that star Wars is so open-ended. You can just go to an extent almost anywhere with it. No, for sure. And I mean, it shows that in all the expanded universe novels that were released back in the day. I mean, there was tons exactly. and tons but, of novels released. Oh, there's so much content, you know. I mean, it's it's awesome. And, you know, and they were super supportive of that. And they still are. You know, I think, you know, obviously they, they've kind of decanonized a lot of stuff. But, but I think uh, they've I also think used that... some of the stuff in 
like the new movies that have come out. Absolutely. Yeah, too. definitely. All right. Well, let's uh let's start talking about the new trailer here that came out. So, first I'm just going to play the trailer real quick and then uh we'll start talking about a couple of parts of it. So, all, all right, right, here it goes. We've passed on all we know. A thousand generations live in you now. But this is your fight. All right, so uh, what were your initial reactions after seeing that trailer for the first time that you had? Um, I mean, obviously excited. Um, mm-hmm. You know, that opening shot of Ray going up against um, Kylo Ren's TIE fighter um, was super cool. You know, uh, I've heard some people complain about the slow motion, how it's not a Star Wars thing or whatever else, but it's like, you know what, like, they're doing so much stuff that's not Star Wars. There's so many different kinds of shots that they're doing that aren't Star Wars, you know, esque kind of kind of things. And I think it's just an evolution of film and everything like that. So, um, and it kind of shows off how awesome their CGI is, you mm-hmm. know. Well, and then um, also who who knows in that trailer, you know, what clips are actually gonna be in the movie or not you know like some right you know i i think we got hit with that a lot in um rogue one Mm -hmm. you know rogue one kind of ruined that for us in a way where it was like i felt like the teaser trailer for rogue one was showing me a different movie than what rogue one was in a way yeah i think there was more hope at the end of the teaser trailer of what the ending was you know especially that shot with tie fighter and and everything like that was so cool. I was like, "Oh man, I can't wait to see that in the movie." And then it never showed up, and I was like, "Dang it!" Like well, that was an awesome shot. It, it's also kind of like the Avengers: Infinity War trailer that showed Hulk at the Battle of Wakanda, even though he was there in the Hulk Buster, you know, suit, not actually right. as the Hulk. Right. And now I've heard rumor, and again, this is just rumor, not a spoiler. So there's a difference. But I had heard rumor that that was almost purposely put in there because and again not not spoiler i never read anything but rumor because uh you know allegedly they time travel in endgame Mm -hmm. and so they almost go and redo that fight where hulk is actually there and so it was almost like the russo's way of like kind of toying with everybody where now you go back you know probably after we watch endgame if that's the truth, then you're going to go back and watch that trailer and be like, holy crap, they had us the whole time. Like, we've been no, watching sure. Endgame when we're watching, you know, Infinity War. Like, holy crap. And so that's awesome. If that's the case, like, I think that's pretty dang cool. And that is, like, totally seeing the whole picture 
of Infinity War and Endgame before they even got there, which I think that was what they were trying to do, right? They were trying to shoot both movies around the same time, or they were yeah. writing both movies. Well, because it, it was originally going to be a two-parter, so it's going to be right, Infinity right. War Part One and Part Two. So yeah, yeah. So I mean, you know, it kind of makes sense if they would have done that, but I hopefully that's an Easter egg. And I hope that one actually plays out because I think that's that'd be pretty cool. That'd be yeah. cool to see that. Yeah, it'd be cool to see that shot in Endgame and be like, "Holy crap, that's a shot from the trailer of Infinity War." How did they do that? How did they know? <laughs> so Obviously now, knew. now going back to Star Wars, um, right? Yeah, we you, can get off a, off track <laughs> a little bit. You, you mentioned something about earlier to me about uh, someone said like all three teaser trailers all started with heavy heavy breathing. Yeah, so I, I listened to Rebel Force Radio. And those guys are great over there. And they were talking about how they noticed the beginning of each of the teaser trailers from Force Awakens, Last Jedi, and The Rise of Skywalker all start with somebody kind of heavy breathing. Obviously, there's music in Last Jedi, and there's a little bit of dialogue from Snoke in the beginning of Force Awakens. But the first character that we see on on screen is breathing heavily. And, I, you know, who knows if that has anything to do with it, but... Um, you know, it's a cool tie in that they did that with each teaser trailer. And I assume that they're smart enough to have done that intentionally and saw a pattern with stuff. Um, you know, just like I think the title of the rise of Skywalker, you know, I, Mm -hmm. I said this, I said this on a Facebook post and I kind of threw my hot take out there that I think Anakin's coming back in this movie. You think he's going to be coming back as like a person or as a force ghost? Well, I mean, he's got to be a force ghost. I don't yeah. think, I don't, I don't think anybody's coming back really from the dead. I mean, Palpatine is different because, I mean, if if uh, um, Darth Maul survived, you know, and isn't a force ghost in the Clone Wars cartoon, then how should the you know leader of the Sith not be able to survive that as well? So no, for sure. And I was actually. Uh, uh, I don't know if you played the story mode for Battlefront 2, but in that story mode, uh, Palpatine's actually a key part in it, in like because it's set after the Battle of Endor, basically. And okay, yeah, I didn't, I didn't get that far. Is that where he's talking through? Yeah, he's talking through like, that. That uh, like it looks kind of like one of his guards. It's like wearing all red and then just has his face. Yeah, it, I saw I saw a picture of that, and I I wasn't sure which game that had come from because I knew it was from some game, and I just I couldn't remember which one it actually came mm-hmm. through. But so, uh, anyways, there's a mission yeah. uh, in the game uh, where you're actually looking at a lab with uh, Luke Skywalker later on in the game. That's I think cool. supposedly supposed to be one of Sidious's lab. Okay. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I remember there was a mission with Luke. When you're you're kind of like on an island, you go through a cave and you have to fight some people and, and yep. you get some kind of artifact or something. Yep. Um, yeah. So I I remember that, but I don't remember. It might be later on then I guess that you see the the Palpatine puppets. I guess you, we'll call you see them Palpatine, Palpatine puppets. like right away. Okay. You, you see them like right when the Death Star is basically destroyed. Okay. You, you, I may you have just to go get back in the and ship and then you see them. Yeah, I may have to go back and. And play those earlier missions. It's taking me so long to get through that game. Yeah. <laughs> Just because I can only play a little bit at a yeah. time. Well, anyways, anyway, going, back to the trailer. Yeah, back to the trailer. <laughs> so I have the audio clips uh, from Force Awakens and Last Jedi of that breathing. So uh, first here I'm going to play the Force Awakens one. And then uh, we'll go into the Last Jedi one. So here it goes. So that was the uh, the breathing that was in the Force Awakens, and then and that here, was Finn. That was yep, Finn. If yep, anybody that was Finn. forgot, so now here's the last Jedi one. This one is Ray. <laughs> so then that was Ray in the Last Jedi. The start of that teaser trailer. Yep. So. 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 
So Ray is Rise of Skywalker and Last Jedi. Yep, she is both of those. Um, and you know, it's interesting because the first two were kind of out of fear, and this one is more of just control. Yeah, you know, I think you know more training you know, type of like. Yeah, I think it shows her progression again. Um, you know, J.J. Abrams said this takes place a couple years after Last Jedi. Um, so obviously Ray has had some time to gather herself. We've seen how powerful she can be. And, and I, I don't even think that's near the extent of it. You know, I think she's right on the, the same rails as Anakin Skywalker. Mm -hmm. You know, she just has a natural ability for the force because nobody really taught her how to do the first things that she did. You know, I mean, she used mind control right away and yeah, she kind of just picked it up off the fly. Like. Right, and then she could force pull stuff. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, without any actual training, like, that's amazing, you know? Like, Luke, could, Luke couldn't do anything for for a long time until he went out to Dagobah. Yeah, like, no, like... I don't think he had... He didn't have any force powers until Empire Strikes Back. Uh, not... He had, like, he, this was... He had it, sight. It, he, yeah. he, had, he had... He could talk to Obi-Wan, and, he, you know, and he kind of had the feeling stuff that he used at the end of A New Hope, where he... You know, shot well, he, he the, did. He did do one force thing before he went actually to Dagobah. He, uh, when he was in the Wampa Cave, he right. He basically right, pulled the, the lightsaber to him. But yeah, in the New Hope, right. he really didn't do anything. At all. Right, and I think Ben had kind of started teaching him. You know, with that because I think there was a gap between A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. It wasn't. Yeah, there was definitely back to a, back. Definitely a gap. Yeah. So, I mean, there was time for him to do, you know, and, and now that he knew he could talk to Ben, like, you know, I think he, he learned a couple of things. At least got a start to it, and then... Right, right. So, one thing that I was watching some videos on the new trailer and the new name. So, this is what I heard from those videos uh, about the Rise of Skywalker name, is that the Jedi are actually going to become called skywalkers basically that hmm. that's what a lot of people are saying right now about what skywalker means for rise of the skywalker in the trailer it, yeah i mean i could see i don't know if i'd skywalker. like that i mean i could see them doing yeah. it i don't know if i would like it though yeah it, it it feels kind of like a not i wouldn't say a cop out and i guess they're you know they're trying to i don't know i like jedi I wouldn't want to ever lose the name right? Jedi like, or the title of Jedi. Like Skywalker just doesn't, you know, oh, you're a Skywalker. It's it's so associated with being a family name. No, for sure. I think classifying a group of people as Skywalkers would be Well, weird. and then the way I kind of see it too is I kind of I kind of look towards the bigger picture and there's obviously going to be, you know, a whole new expanded universe written, you know, after these movies are done. People are going to write stories and I don't want Skywalker to be the thing like you were just saying, like in those books later on that are set after this movie, you know, or movies after this to replace Jedi with Skywalker, basically. I mean, what if it means that Luke is kind of, you know, now we're, you know, as we're coming up on Easter time, you know, and the resurrection and all that kind of stuff, maybe, you know, Luke comes back from the dead or something like that, which I don't know if I'd. I, you know, I, I can't really decide how I'd want this to end. And I think that's because I don't want to be disappointed with the movie. So I'm yeah. trying not to have expectations. You know, I think I had some expectations for Last Jedi. And I wasn't disappointed with Last Jedi. I felt like there was things that could have been done better. But, you know, I'm kind of the fanboy that I'm going to kind of like just about everything. You know, there was parts that I didn't like about Solo, um, but there was parts that I did like. So, well, you know. I, I think the biggest problem you have is just the way they, they set up this new Star Wars, like, trilogy in the first place. Like, if you look like the Marvel Universe, they had basically one person, you know, mapping everything out. In this one, it was more director-driven, kind of like what the DC Universe was. So they really didn't, doesn't seem like they had a plan, you know, for what they wanted to do for episodes eight and nine. Yeah. I mean, I think 
you know, we're going to see more consistency between seven and nine, obviously with JJ there. And I, and I think Ryan Johnson had said that it was going to be okay for JJ to kind of like retcon a couple of things from his movie. Well, you can see him already doing it in the trailer with having Kylo repairs or whoever with the hairy hands. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Repairing the the Skywalker lightsaber being back already. Yeah, I think I think they realized after Last Jedi that there was a couple of things where it was like, "Oh crap, you you did that." So I guess we're gonna have to fix that for everybody. Well, I think JJ you know, Abrams I mean, basically the said it. Awesome. In a, JJ Abrams basically said it in an interview about having to fix stuff from uh, basically Jedi. Yeah, couple, which Ryan Johnson's ago. given him full approval to do yeah. it. He's like, yeah, man, fix whatever you need to do. Sorry, I messed it up, you know? And and part of me is kind of like, would I have just rather seen a J.J. Abrams Star Wars trilogy? But I think him having a break from the middle movie um, will be beneficial to him. You know, mm. I think people kind of felt like J.J. tried too hard in the second Star Trek movie, and... You know, and it was too much too soon in a way. And so now that he's got a break, and I think like he's pl- he, he does well playing off of others. Mm-hmm. And so now he's like, okay, so this is what Ryan did. Now I'm going to come and fix this and fix this, and I'm going to close this thing out. So yeah, I feel sure. good about it. You know, I, I think he's going to do a great job. I, I can't imagine anybody else that I would want at this point that I can think of in a geek world that I would want to probably finish this series out. Yeah, I think um, I would definitely want know, J.J. Abrams to be the, you know, the yeah, one. Yeah, I mean, I, I certainly don't, you know, don't don't hate me for this, but, you know, I think it's good that George is not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that he's had some influence on things and that kind of stuff, but, you know, directing especially was just not... Everybody knows not what you always with George's. George, basically, by now, you know. Yeah, and and I think him not having full control, you know, that's kind of what he did with episodes one, two, and three was, you know, I mean, he had some people working with him, but for the most part, he was like, hey, listen, yeah. the buck stops here, and he had the ability to say that because, you know, yeah. he's freaking George Lucas, and he, you know, we wouldn't be in this position if it wasn't for him, so. Yeah, for sure. Um, and so, all right, so there's just one last thing I want to talk about with the trailer, and okay. that is the very ending of the trailer. Uh, I'm going to play uh-huh. the clip right now real quick, and then we'll just talk about, you know, what do you think? Uh, how is he going to come back? So, all right, here we go. No one's ever really gone. <laughs> so I think that's the biggest part to take away from the trailer. From this whole trailer is that uh, little clip right there of Palpatine. Well, and the teaser trailer has a tease in it, you know? I mean, Luke kind of says, you know, what was his line? Um, Some people never go away or something like that, you know? And I think the initial reaction is like, oh, you know, Luke never leaves you. And just like Obi-Wan never left Luke and, Mm -hmm. you know, and all this kind of stuff. And then you bring in the evil voice of Emperor Palpatine and it's like... You know, that makes it makes sense to me. I don't feel like they're going, well, crap, we really need to make a a reason for Snoke and blah, blah, blah. It's like this is actually OK because Snoke does tie in all nine movies then because mm-hmm. he was a part of one through six, you know, just like I'm OK if they bring Anakin back, even though I'm not a huge Hayden Christensen fan of his character. Like, I think the cartoon versions did him much better, but. I'm okay bringing Anakin and Palpatine back because these guys tie together all the movies. Like we wouldn't be here literally if it was not for the story of Anakin and Palpatine getting involved in Anakin's life and story and driving him to be a Jedi and driving him to turn Sith and become Darth Vader and Vader throwing him down, you know, well, it's kind of shaft and all that kind of stuff. It's kind of like you said, uh, that, you know, one through six are about Darth Vader, about Anakin Skywalker. So right. you kind of got to go, you think in episode nine, it's kind of go back to that Skywalker, that Anakin. Thing, especially cause... especially if they're going to tie together all nine movies. You mm-hmm. know, and J.J. said, this is going to tie together and bring together the prequels and the original trilogy and now the sequels. Like, there is a tie. And, it, and even if it's just Palpatine, that's fine. As long as it's 
a good ending to it, but I don't think they should ignore Anakin's existence. For besides sure. Besides him being a busted up helmet, you know, that uh, Kylo Ren idolized that's blown up now, or where who knows where that helmet is. Yeah, if it's know. still even around. Yeah, I think he had it on a ship or something, because it was wherever he had Rey. So whatever his ship, you know, and I don't remember if that thing got blown up or not. So I, I don't think it did, but in this trilogy, they haven't really, like, been big. Like, you, you could always tell what, in, you know, Star Destroyer in, like, the original trilogy they had. And then in this one, it doesn't, you don't, like, feel like that. You know, like, you don't feel like this one is Kylo's, you know... Other than the big one that was in The Last Jedi, that really big Star Destroyer. Yeah, Snoke's yeah, ship was Snoke's. massive. That reminds me of Thanos' ship. Yeah. <laughs> Just this massive thing. I think Snoke's was bigger. All right, so uh, um, you can't wait till this is, comes out in December, right? Yeah, oh, absolutely. And, and there's going to be, uh, what, another one or two trailers... Before that time, I think we'll get another you, one maybe this summer or at the end of the summer. You would assume Something that there like would that. at least be at least one or two, you know. You never know whether they're going to try to go the the route that Avengers went and try to release as little as possible with Endgame. Yeah, so. I mean, but Endgame still has put out three trailers. Yeah. You know, they just put out another one yesterday and you know and some more tv spots and things like that so it's gonna be weird to see how much they put together because i remember when force awakens came out they had about seven minutes worth of content that came out through all the tv commercials and trailers and all that stuff because there was a compilation where people tried to tell the story of a force awakens through all the commercial you know through all that content and they were actually fairly close like some people were scary close before the movie came out and you know i'm not going to make the same mistake as i did with force awakens and and watch a compilation trailer but i think they did better with last jedi i don't think anybody really put anything together from last jedi well not yeah for sure and and just to finish with i think it was really nice to see lando in that trailer oh yeah that was that little yeah that was great and yeah you gotta you gotta have at least one you know former person Kind of, you know, another yeah. original trilogy person in there. Out of, I think, almost all the original char- like original trilogy characters I've seen, he looked like he was the, like, obviously he's a little bit, you know, you know fatter now than he was when he was Lando. He, but you, he looked a little heavy. Yeah, yeah. but you, you could, but you could sense, you know, like that he's picking up right where he left off at Return of the Jedi, oh, you know, with yeah, the character. Yeah, he's still got the charisma. Yeah, he's still got the charisma, and I yeah. don't think Lando was ever going to lose that. You saw that in Solo. You know, he started yeah. with the charisma, and that's just that's just who Lando is, and that's fun. Hey, I'm, I'm cool with that. All right, well, uh, thanks for joining, and uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll yeah. see you next time. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Hope to come back again. Yeah, we'll be glad to have you next time. Maybe we'll get Bo in here, and... Uh, have have see what Bo's uh take on all this, even though he doesn't watch Star Wars or uh or Game of Thrones or Avengers. Oh boy, that this could be really interesting. <laughs> yeah, so but he does like Ray, so that's the only reason he he's watched some of the hmm. new ones is for Ray. So that's that's fair. Yeah. That's fair. I'll give him that. Daisy, Daisy Ridley is very beautiful. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, thanks again. Bye. All right. Thanks a lot.